And we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Roadrunners Unfiltered. It is your host, Darian Stalin. Back once again, uh, doing a live show this week. Last week, it was chaotic. I had a busy work week, and there was basically a conference that uh, my team was hosting, so I had to be on job duties uh, late into the late into the days last week. But we still got you guys a podcast. Let me know what you guys thought of the podcast with Jarvion. I got some pretty good reception from that podcast and it was really, really fun. And I plan on doing more of those and getting guys, getting with guys in the studio. I got a couple of guys that I've already secured for next week. I'm sure you guys are going to be happy about both of those guys coming in. One's going to come uh, down to Austin and we're going to get together and do an in-studio podcast. And that one will not be live, but I will be posting that. Um, I'll be posting those or that show um, maybe next weekend, depending on, the post-production, the post-production with those in um, in studio shows takes a little bit more time. It takes a couple days to get the camera angles and make sure it's switching on time and things like that. But that's going to be exciting um, for you guys. But I guess to get started, I would like to start with with uh, treats. But before I get into that, uh, for for all of you guys who are here right now, make sure you smash a like on the button and subscribe to the channel. I definitely need to get to this thousand mark. I've been slacking a little bit uh, just because the work schedule has been crazy, but I think things are going to be clear for a while now. So make sure you if you if you're new here, make sure you smash um, a smash that whatever button that so you can subscribe to the channel and then also smash a like on the video as well. And also for additional content. I know I hadn't put a lot out yet additional from members only, but there will be a lot more um, um, of that coming. Trust me on that. I am just trying. I just got to hit this thousand subscriber number. So if any, if you guys can do anything uh, to help me hit that goal, I would really appreciate it. Now, uh, without further ado, I want to talk about uh, what's coming the next couple of weeks and the, the two guys we have uh, uh, um, scheduled. So, uh, Josiah Tawefa, Josiah Tawefa, I, I put a poll out or I put a question out on the Twitter and asked folks, uh, you know, who would they like to come on the podcast and do a show? Um, and, um, I seen Josiah name come, come up quite a bit. So I reached out to him and he was more than happy to join the show. So he'll be joining the show next Wednesday. Um, as long as everything stays, um, according to plan, he'll be joining the show next Wednesday and you guys who uh, watch the show live will be able to come in and ask questions and things like that. We're going to talk about a myriad of things uh, with regards to UTSA football. So jo Josiah Tawefa will be on the show next week um, live. So you guys be, be, be sure to set your clocks and uh, tune into that. Also next week, I'm going to have David Glasgow come down next week in studio. We're going to get together Saturday morning and we're going to uh, record the show then. We're, I'm going to a lot a little bit more time. Uh, the 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 thing about the Jarvion conversation was it ended whenever it was really starting to get good, right? So I think um, if you guys are okay with uh, and you have the attention span to go a little bit longer than an hour, I think I'm going to try to do an hour and a half with, with Glasgow and, and see if that is a better time for you guys. So um, yeah, David Glasgow is coming down. He's going to come down to Austin. We're going to get into the studio. That's going to be fun. Uh, so be sure for those, I'm going to be posting stuff. So for those, I know there are some folks wishing they could have asked Jarvis Young questions and things like that. Get your questions in early as you possibly can. You can do it today on this video. You can wait and do it, um, um, sometime next week. But uh, I am definitely going to be soliciting for questions and topics that you guys would like to hear about. Those always help the conversation out a little bit more. So, yeah, um, that'd be great. So those are the show updates. I'm really excited about what's to come. I'm going to try to continue to keep the guests rolling, keep the guests rolling. So anybody you want to hear from, um, just let me know. And I will say I know a lot of folks want me to get Coach Traylor on here. That one's going to be a little bit tougher. Uh, and I think for a couple of reasons. Number one, if I do a show with Coach Trailer, I want that to be live. I, I, I want that to be in person. I don't want to do that over Zoom or, you know, StreamYard that I'm using. I want that to be um, interaction, 
you know, live. I want to be able to ask some questions and feel, feel the vibe and things like that. So I am working on something like that, but that's going to take some work. I also want the channel to reach a little bit of a, a higher level. And I like to do that before the season. And I, you know, I like to pick his brain right before he, he goes into battle and goes into war for a season. So I'm going to try to make that happen, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I just looked, <laughs> I just looked in the chat. And my and 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 my friend Angela said thanks for the 6 p.m. move. Yeah, you called it out, and uh, uh, I made the change. So yeah, that that that's awesome. I hope this is a better time for everybody. Um, I know last time I did a live, I think it was spring break, and it was it was slim picking. So hopefully this time is more suitable. Everybody voted for 6 p.m., and that's what we're doing from here on out. So uh, thank you guys for showing up. Now, uh, I want to jump into some of the topics that I had. Please feel free to um, fill up the comment section with topics you guys want to talk about um, as those that help, obviously, members get priority. So uh, shout out to everyone who is a member. If you want to be a member, please do that. That helps out the channel. Um, I am putting I am I am telling you guys now I am really, really going to put a significant investment into the podcast this year to bring you guys uh, better content. A lot of that stuff is going to be geared toward the season, but uh, any th anything you guys can do to help, um, the best way to help me is, is to join as a member. And I really appreciate you guys for doing that. But now, as we jump out of the program updates into some of the things that's happened around UTSA that I've been interested in has been catching my eye. Um, I'm going to talk about the quarterback situation because I feel like that's always something we we always end up talking about. I'm going to talk about the spring game uh, that's coming in a couple of weeks. And there's a couple of things I want to see from the team in that uh, game. I'm going to make it a point to 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 come out there and watch. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about is we've talked a little bit about now that Frank Harris is gone and, you know, Rashad Wisdom is gone. Those guys have been the face of the program for quite, you know, for quite some time while they were at UTSA. Um, and I've been kind of wondering, and we've talked about it here on this, on the podcast show, who is going to be that next guy in line, right? Who's going to be the next person that's going to be the face of the program. And it's kind of been weird because it's like, we don't really know. Um, you know, you'd like it to be one of the quarterbacks, but they're, they don't know who's going to be the guy that's coming in. It could be, it could be uh, McCown, it could be Marburger, or you just never know what can happen. We have a, uh, a transfer portal window opening up here in a couple of a uh, couple of weeks. We could strike at that point. I I doubt we do, but you know, you never know, right? So um, I think it's hard for the quarterbacks to be. But what I'm starting to see is it's going to be Oscar Cardenas. That's 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 what it seems like. Coach Trailer's hitching his wagon to right now is Oscar Cardenas, and I think. That's that's a good thing. Um, but it's a great thing actually, because I think he can do the job. He has a lot of leadership. He's coming back for a 60 year of eligibility. Um, and I think that, you know, I think just when you hear him talk and you hear him carry yourself, I also think I was just watching some clips of him moving around in camp um or in spring camp. You can see that his body is already transformed. I don't know how much weight he's lost and things like that, but he doesn't look the way he looked in years past. He's definitely slimmed down. He looked a lot, and I don't. It could be the camera angle, so uh, I could be getting tricked here. He looked a lot slimmer and a lot more, uh, you know, you know, a lot quicker, and he had looked like he had a lot more speed. Um, that's that's a, that, which I think is a big deal. So I think. That's really good, but I'm more interested in seeing what of the younger guys are going to step up and sort of walk into those shoes and sort of uh, take that step and starting to be a face of the team. Um, I, I think that although it's great that Oscar's doing that and he's stepping up as a leader, I'll, we'll also be in the same position next year whenever he leaves because he can't be here forever. Right. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, whether it's the quarterback, I'm sure the quarterback will, will, will garner some of that, whichever one ends up winning the job. But I also think that you need guys like a Rashad wisdom and, and guys who are on other side, you know, on the other side of the ball, that's going to step in and be a big time 
a big time person. I know some, you know, there's Jamal Liggins out there and things like that. It's just to me, that's something that always interests me on like because those guys, a lot of the times you can they steer the team in a way, if that makes sense. They they can really steer the direction of the team and things like that. And I think we're in safe hands with Oscar, of course. But I, I was really, really hoping to um see one of the younger guys get pushed forward a little bit more. Let me let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. Um it's interesting though. It's interesting that 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 we're 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 hitching the wagon to a to our tight end um who's really good. Um and it also makes it seem like he's going to be a bigger part of the offense next season too. Um and I think that could, that could, that can help, but we'll we'll have to see. Um I want to talk about the what I what, I'll go into the quarterback situation next. But I'm thinking about the spring game in a couple of weeks, and I was talking with some buddies last week about the spring game. I talked to Jarvion about this offline as well, about, you know, going into when you, what do you want to get out of the spring, right? Like a lot of folks will question why is there a spring? What, what do you, what does spring ball mean? Why do you do spring ball? They don't do spring ball in they don't do spring ball in the NFL. Why do they do it in college? Um, I am getting calls from Evans Okacha. Y'all remember him? Evans Okacha is calling me. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> but yeah, you get the you start to think about, um. What do you want to get out of spring ball? Spring ball, to me, is going to be more important this year than it has been for a very long time, which is why I'm making sure that I'll be in San Antonio to, to watch that game. In years past, uh, spring, spring ball is not that it is something that you don't care about. It's one of those things where we've had – certain positions all we already knew. like for example we knew frank harris was going to come into the team and uh be the starting quarterback we we knew who the, a lot of the defenders were and and all this type of stuff we knew who was going to be the the guys we'd see on the field and the d line and the, the receivers and things like that we had a lot of young guys who would come through the program who who was already established for years so the spring Spring ball was more so to see, all right, who do we have on a bench and things like that. And you get a lot of significant there, – there is significance in that, of course, 100%. Um, however, this spring ball means a lot because there's a lot of unprovens – excuse me. There is a lot of unprovens on the team, and this is going to be their first showcase to the public. And um, I think that's huge. I think that is huge. Uh, I think I want to see those receivers that we have. I want to see coach trailer was talking about, we're going to have the ability to stretch the field a lot more than we've had in the past. And we've been pretty good at stretching the field uh, in the past with the guys that we've had who weren't super speedsters. Right. Um, but you know, he's talked about all the sub 10, what 10, five guys that we have uh, at, at the wide receiver position. I want to see that on display. I want to, I'm, I'm going to be there with a pen and paper seeing if Italy Marburger, you know, the type of passes that he's, that he's putting together. I also, you know, want to see what Owen McCown is going to be doing as well. And then I think I'll tell you one thing that's going to be key in watching um, um, in the, in the spring game and what I think is significant. And I, and I challenge or not challenge, but I, I'd encourage all of you guys to show up to the game and, and watch the game. And, and and really pay attention to some of this stuff. There was a lot of scrutiny, especially for me. I'll just be completely honest. There was scrutiny from me. Um, and I even talked to Frank, Frank Harris about it whenever he was on the show. Um, their offensive coordinator, right? Like it was that was his first, that was his first year doing the doing the job and trying to figure things out. What's to me, what's going to be telling is what type of play calls does he call for Owen McCown versus what type of play calls does he call for Italy Marburger? That to me is going to be, it's going to say a lot because I do think both guys have different skill sets. I do think both guys have 
the ability to – I think they can make most throws from what I've seen, both of them. But um, what – of those type of throws, what suits our offensive play callers uh, scheme more? What does he like? What is he comfortable with, right? Because that's what it's going to come down to. You might have one guy with better arm talent, but the other guy may throw – particular passes that suits the offense better for him right if we're if we're stretching the ball downfield well maybe they go with the stronger arm guy you know or maybe maybe he's more comfortable with that guy at quarterback because he can make the passes that allows him to uh, run his offense the way he like to run that's going to be extremely extremely important to, to 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 watch um in this spring game and i know in spring games and i'll, I'll just be honest with you in spring games, the the coaches they don't run a full script. They're not because they know that other t- opposing teams are going to get film of the you know they're gonna they're gonna get film of the spring game and they're gonna get tape and things like that. So they're not gonna put their best stuff on tape. But the what they will sh- they will show a little bit of what they're gonna be about because it is also a marketing play. It is a showcase of. You know what? Hey guys, you should come and see the runners, right? That's exactly what um uh the spring game is there to do. So, although they're not going to go deep in the bag and show, you know, s- certain things, they are going to going to try to go out there and put on a showcase for the f- for the fans that are watching and things like that. And to me, it will just be interesting to see what play calls are decided from the coordinator. Then also there's been a lot of talk about our defense and how good our defense has been as well. I think, um, you know, that's important too. I, I, I almost expect, I think the defense has more folks coming back. So I think defensively, I'd expect the defense to put, have a good showing. Um, but here's another thing. Whenever I do hear, Hey man, the corners are good. I feel like one of the, I think I want to say they quoted McEwen on saying, Oh, our corners are really, really good. That also shows me that there's probably some growing some growing pains that are starting to show at that quarterback position as well. So, um, oh man, this chat is quiet today. But um, yeah, it's just food for thought. I think that right now, um, UTSA this transitionary period to me is super intriguing. It's super intriguing because um there's so much, uh, there's so many unknowns around the program. It's one of the things I think about um, whenever I'm, 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 you know, sort of surfing, surfing Twitter and just I'm doing UTSA research and things about, I feel like there's just not, this is, this is just me and I don't consume all content, uh, all UTSA content um, with other podcasts and other shows and websites and things like that. I have a couple that I look at and that's pretty much it. But to me, there's just not enough attention around um, the, I don't know, there's not, I have not sensed as much intrigue as as I have about this new um, situation that we're stepping into. Um, And I wonder why. I wonder if that that means that there's a expectation that UTSA is just going to come in and we're going to step right onto the right into the AAC next year and we're going to dominate. I, it probably has something to do with that, right? I think we was talking before. I think everybody that's come on the show has talked about um, the fan base in general. It's good that we have expectations, but are those expectations unrealistic, right? Um, and I don't know if that's the case, but for me, I am, I am fixated in between a factor of nervousness and excitement kind of i'm excited to see something i'm i'm excited to see the new guard coming to utsa who's going to be the new stars who's going to be the new people they put on billboards who's going to be the new people that um um or the new players that all the 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 fan base rallies around like they rallied around a lot of the 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 team that we've had uh, in the past right um i'm also nervous that like what happens if we fall on our face you know you know we have a really good I I think that we have a lot of good guys coming back, but like anytime you make a change at the quarterback position like that, it, it generally has a large impact on um, how good 
your team is going to be. You can't be one dimensional. And as we start to get in these better conferences, you know, one dimensional teams don't don't win games. You just it just doesn't happen, right? So, um, I am really really intrigued at what's coming what's coming in the spring or what's coming out of this spring and how we're going to look like we're coming to the, as we go into uh, next year, because you got to think about it. We're almost at April. It's almost April already. Then you got a summer and then August to be here in no time. And then camp starts again. Right. And, you know, so I feel like when, you know, once we, once it's just not that far away. It's what I'm saying, basically. Like, this is normally the time as a player and an athlete in the UTSA program that you start to kind of – you get to a point to where you start itching for the season now. You're like, oh, I can smell it. Like, it's in the – you know, the season is sort of in the air. Like, we can, you know – you're in a heated position battles right now. Guys are jockeying for position. It's just going to be interesting. Another thing, too, is just a surface-level thing is who do they roll out with the ones? Who do they roll out with the twos? Who's, who, who, you know, offense and defense? Think about it. Like, Coach Trailers communicated a 1A, 1B approach at the quarterback position. But everybody knows that we're all going to be watching whenever the first team offense, and he has to select one person to go out there and represent the offense um, in the spring game and give the one reps to. You can't put two quarterbacks out. You got to put, you got to put one out. And to me, that's going to be the first concrete thing of who, you know, who's going to be the starter next year, right? Who at receiver is going to be the starter? What, you know, are we going to see JT Clark? Probably not, but, you know, you just, you, you know, the clarity is going to be a big one. Also at running back, who's going to be your starting running back? I've had folks come on here and we've all sort of said different things. I've, I've heard, well, I've heard, I'm cool with the running back by a committee approach, but I've heard guys say, um, you know, Robert Henry. I think J uh, uh, Jalen said Rocco Griffin. Uh, I said, you know what, well, we could probably stick with Kavorian Barnes, but I wouldn't be surprised if Robert Henry takes it or something like that. So I'm just ready to see, all right, what are the coaches rallying around in their head in terms of who's going to come out there and get UTSA victories? Uh, let's see. We do got – we got a first comment. Roadrunner Hype says, our first comment 20, 23 minutes in. Guys, this is a record. For first comment that is not, uh, that is, that is not, Popeye Carter did say the discussion with Jarvian was fire. I appreciate that. And then a Angela came in and thanks for the, C the, the, uh, the 6 p.m. move. But this is our first comment toward the topics we're talking about. Fill that comment box up. If you guys can, uh, but the first one is from Road Runner Hype. He says, "I feel like the talent is there, but I think the question everyone feels creeping up is, can we be consistent and move the ball? If yes, we will be fine. If not, it could be a rough year." Great comment. Um, I feel like, listen, consistently moving the ball is going to be. I think consistency is going to be the key of next year, if I'm being completely honest, because I don't know if I think we were fairly inconsistent this year, if I'm just being completely honest, I think obviously with Frank going down a little bit. Um, there was going to be some chopping choppiness in the season with him missing a few, uh, missing a game or two and just being banged up, not being able to finish games and things like that. So I think we weren't very consistent this year. I do think some of the play calling was inconsistent too, and I hope that we clean that up. I'm talking about on the offensive side, I thought our defense, our defense was relatively consistent last year, um, but they weren't consistent. It's weird. They were consistent because they were really good at making adjustment at, adjustments at halftime and then forcing offenses to change up what they do or something like that in order for them to be able to move the ball. Typically, typically last year in the second half, we didn't give up as many points as we gave up in the first half. So our defense had a little bit of consistency. Uh, but back to your point about moving the ball on the offensive side and that being where the consistent lies, right? I think that 
we as a fan base and as supporters of the program should probably bake in inconsistency in our expectations. I think that would be a wise thing to do. Uh, the reason for that is because anytime you come in with a, and we could go, we could go get a veteran quarterback that's already good from another program, and they'd even be inconsistent as well because now they're they're under the lights playing with guys that they aren't familiar with. So <clears throat> I think in this particular case, in the situation that we're in with Eddie Lee Marburger and uh, Owen McCown, these are two inexperienced quarterbacks who are, who have, you know, who are relatively young. And um, this is going to be their first time, maybe not on so much. Cause I know he had some of that experience at Colorado, but at UTSA, this is going to be the first time where a season, not an individual game, but a season is being um, planned around either of those two, like in a real way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like I'm sure the coaches went into the season last year and thought about, hey, you know what? Our backup is Italy Marburger. And like, let's make sure that we do have some 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 play in stall for him that's suitable for his play style just as a backup, I guess, like just to get us through and 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 keep the train on the tracks. But generally, whenever you go into that season and you've got a Frank Harris has been there for years, your offense is going to be tailored around his strengths. And 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 also because his strengths are a lot more unique than your typical quarterback. So. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. I think we're going to see some pretty different play calling because our quarterback situation is going to be different. And I also think that's going to come with its challenges. If we had questionable play calling, and and it was questionable from my perspective, maybe not everybody else completely get that. But uh, if we're in a situation where we have questionable play calling, you know, or no, 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 I'm sorry. We might be in a situation where we're going to have more questionable play calling because not only was th the new coordinator trying to figure out, okay, what, what works with Frank, he has to do that all over again, folks. He has to do that all over again and check this out. It's going to be a little bit more challenging because guess what? He has two people to worry about. Now you don't have a starter that you just know for a fact is going to be on the field every game in and game out. You have two people that you have to make sure that your the plays that you draw up in the, in the offensive scheme, you have to make sure that um, um, you're prepared for both guys. And another thing too, another thing that makes it even more challenging. And this is me throwing, you know, giving, giving a coordinator, um, you know, not, not necessarily a pass. I'm just acknowledging the difficulty that um, his job, you know, is going to be coming into the season. Not only does he have to prepare <clears throat> going into a season without a quarterback that he's that he knows has you know that has already been a starter, so he has to deal with two guys, and both of those guys, one guy's left-handed, one guy's right-handed. So, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm sorry. One of one of the guys is left-handed, and one of the guys is right-handed. So think about. Whenever you want to get a guy um, an easy catch, you know, you know, just get him in a rhythm. Maybe he's had a bad play. You want to get him an easy catch, and you go play action and roll him out. Well, you're probably going to boot McCown left, and then you're going to probably boot Marburger right because of the throwing hand. So you got to also have – and, guys, trust me, like running the same play the opposite side, it's not difficult but you play on different strengths, right? Like, <clears throat> excuse me. Like you might have a lineman who is more comfortable sliding another way. You know, there might be a lineman that's more comfortable sliding left, right? Well, you put in Marburger and maybe this lineman who, who, you know, was sliding left and he does that fine. And maybe he's had, he's a, he's someone who's been on a line before and he's used to having to slide left with Frank because that's where we booted him out. But now he's he being asked to go right. And like I said, these are all problems and things that these guys practicing. 
hours and hours out of the day to work on. I'm not saying it's just it's impossible or it's just like too difficult, but I'm just going through the stuff that a coordinator has to think about whenever he's preparing with brand new quarterbacks. And oh, by the way, we don't know which one's going to start. Yeah, and they're one's left, one's right handed. You know, it can be difficult. All right, we got some comments coming in now. It's awesome. Let's see it. Let's see. We got uh, Papa says, might have to lean on our defense to the offense. Well, absolutely. The defensive play in the beginning of the season is going to be extremely, extremely important for UTSA, 100%. Um, I think that the defense has some guys on there that should be able to make plays, but they're going to have to help the offense out because we can't go – and I hope they take that responsibility, right? And I hope the coach, I'll be honest with you, I hope that our coach is challenges the defense in that way. I hope he starts to, to, to say that. I hope he starts to publicly say, you know what, we're going to have to lean on our defense. Because guess what? That lights a fire up under the offense because they don't want to feel like they're the burden. That also applies a little pressure to, to the quarterback because – those quarterbacks know that, you know what, people are a little hesitant because we're taking over now. Frank's gone. This is life after Frank. And now it's the ELM era or the McCown era, era right? So I'd hope that he come out and, and says something like that. But, yes, 100%, I think it's going to take us at least three or four games for our offense to really start to catch stride. And I know that's a quarter of the season almost, but it's just what it is. Or, well, it is a quarter of the season. But it's going to take time. It's going to it's going to take time, 100%. Mike says, what's going on, Mike? Mike says, I wonder how the conference as a whole is looking. If it's a down year, it could play in our favor, given we are looking to replace key pieces. I hope it's a down year, but I, I hope it's a down year, but I don't think it will be, if I'm being honest. I don't think it'll be a down year. Just... Some of the things that I've been reading about what's going on in the spring and some of the acquisitions that some of the folks in the AAC have gotten, um, I think they're. I think it's going to be a tough. I think it's going to be a tough year. I can tell you this: Army joining the AAC doesn't help out. Doesn't help out, and them being on our schedule doesn't help out. I want to tell you right now. I'll tell you again that they, they, they're like our kryptonite. If I'm being completely honest. Um. So yeah, I, I'm. I mean, listen. I. I. I I honestly, yes, you're right that if it's a down year, it'll help us out. Um, but I, I want to see good football. I hope it's not a down year. I hope it's not a down year. I do think we have – I am cautiously optimistic at what our team is going to be able to do next year. I don't want to – I don't I don't have, like, super high, high expectations at this particular point in time. And I will probably have some expectations after the spring game. I'll tell you that uh, based on what I see there. But yeah, that'll be um, that'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Scott B says uh, finding our identity is huge. Yeah, that's going to be a big one because we don't have one at the moment. We've had an identity for all of this, all you know, these last three years. We don't have one at the moment. We don't have one at the moment. And what is our team going to be? Are we going to be a run style team? We're going to be, you know, a team with a dynamic quarterback. Are we going to be a team with a quarterback that sits in the pocket and picks people apart? Right. Are we going to be a team that stretches the ball down the field as coach trailer has been talking about with those really speedy receivers that we have outside? Is that going to be something that's going to be our strength? Are we going to utilize our three headed monster and be a run first team and, 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 and getting those running backs in the space and things like that. We have tools, we have weapons, um, but we have to put the pieces together and the key ingredient to putting the, that piece together is an offensive line that's blocking and giving the guys um, that's throwing the ball time. That's going to be hugely important to our success. And we have new guys, we have new guys all up and down that area. Right. So um, it's going to be interesting and it's going to be um, something that I'm sure we will try. We'll want to try to establish early. Uh, Roadrunner Hype says, I agree uh, adaptation is going to be key this year from the staff, but I do trust they know their players well. The one upside of the coaching staff having to recruit themselves instead of a recruiting staff. It's interesting you say that. 
considering that we just hired a director of recruiting. Uh, what was it about a, uh, maybe a week or two ago? We just hired a director of recruiting. Um, and I'm curious to see how that works because I want to say, I, I, if somebody knows the answer to this question, I don't know it off my head, but I wonder how many recruiters will we have dedicated to football? That's just their job is just going to be recruiting. That's going to be under this, under this person. I want to say it was a small number, but I know the guy we got is pretty young. Um, I think he's like the youngest something, right? We're gonna, yeah, he's the, he's he's just yeah, he's the youngest director in college football. Oh, he's twenty two. Jeez. Okay. Huh. I, listen, AJ know but a number. If he knows his stuff, he knows his stuff. I did not know he was twenty two. My question is. All right, director of football. What does his staff look like? Is he gonna have a staff? I'm sorry, it's a she. Why did they show a man's face up here? That's interesting. Okay, well, I'm looking at the day-to-day -day operations of the of recruiting, including coordinating all unofficial visits, official visits, junior days, etc. So it's not what I thought it was. That's womp, womp, womp. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Anyway, um, back to your question about the, or your comment about, you know, is one upside of having a coaching staff, having to recruit themselves instead of a recruiting staff. Yeah, but the thing of don't the, the one thing that I will say to that is like with a lot of the new guys that they bring in, you don't know what they're going to be like when the lights come on at, on Saturday. Like you know what kind of pl the player profile is. You got you got to understand when these coaches go out and recruit. Um they look for obviously talent and people that hop off the screen. That much is obvious, right? It's player profile is is what's most important for these folks. Like, think about it. Whenever you so for let's let's say, for example, a lot of the times, I'll just use corner, for example. That's the position I know the most. At corner, what you like to have, um, you want to have two great guys, regardless, right? But in an ideal world, you like to have a guy who has a lot of size that has um, speed that can cover deep balls really well. That's a profile corner. Uh, think of a Tyreek Woolen, right? 6'4", you know, long, lanky, and, you know, he's running 40 at 2'2". Two, that's, that's a profile of corner, right? So a coach will, a defensive coordinator will say, hey, in my defense that makes what will make my defense work pr perfectly is I want this, you know, he'll have a, he'll have a list of the type of profile player he wants in every single position. So for a corner, you might want one of those big corners who can, you know, on one side, you want the big corner who can cover the deep balls and these tall and stuff like that. On the other side, you might want a, a shorter corner who can change, who, who may not have, the same level of top line speed, but that corner that's a little bit shorter is your corner that you want to put on the side where they like to like to run a lot of quick routes and they can knock out all the underneath stuff. They are the ones with the crazy agility, right? They can change direction really, really quick. That's what I, that's when I was at UTSA, that was my strength, right? I wasn't the straight line speed fastest guy on the team. Not at all. One of the things I was fastest on the team, it, well, uh, one of the fastest on the team at was, you know, five ten five drill. That's based on agility. How fast can you change direction? How fast can you break on the ball? How fast can you uh, go left or right? How fast can you react to something? So that's a profile. Maybe on the defensive line, you want a tall guy on the left side of the defensive line because we play a lot of right hand quarterbacks who are going to be throwing out left or, or right, yeah, right hand quarterbacks who likes to throw 
you know, to their left or whatever. We need a guy that can jump up and knock the balls down, you know, and, and who's also a good pass rusher. Think of a Marcus Davenport, right? Or think of a, you know. So anyway, by each position, there's player profiles that they like to stick. They like to stick um, a player there. So whenever they build up their recruiting uh, um, plan, they're going to say, okay, I only want corners that are, you know, six, one and up. And they all have to be four, four speed. Right. And they all have to be able to jump at least 37 inches, 37 inch vertical. They might have that on the sheet and then they'll go, they'll go recruit. That's sort of how it works. <clears throat> so I, I break all that down to say they understand the profile of players they get there and they're obviously going to get talent from those guys, but there's still some learning they have to do on what are these guys going to be able to perform like on a Saturday night in front of 30, 40,000 people. That's a whole different ball game. Anyway, I digress. Uh, Mike says, I did hear coach mention in a recent interview that all positions will be two to three deep and players will rotate with the except, exception of kicker and quarterback. This sounds like this sounds like at some point a starter will be named. That's interesting. I didn't hear that one. That's really, really interesting. You know what? I like that he said that. I like that he said that because, and I like that he said that publicly because, yeah, to your point, that does mean a quarterback is going to be chosen and it's going to be one guy. We're not going to go quarterback up by committee. I know I, whenever I heard him say we might even do two guys, I was like, please don't be that guy. Get one guy and roll and roll with it. You know what I mean? Get one guy and roll with it. So um I am I am I am excited about that. And I hope, listen, I will. If he said that, that means that somebody is, might be separating themselves in camp right now, which to me is a good thing. It's a good thing. But two to three deep in all positions is something that we'll need. And also, it, it tells – it also te – you, you got to read between the lines on some of these quotes and stuff that comes from the coach, right? When he says this, all that tells me when he says there's two to three deep players and they will rotate with the exception of kicker and quarterback and stuff like that. That two to three deep means there's a lot of position battles going on right now. And to me, that's the intriguing thing about this, about this spring is that like, there's so much going on. Um, there's so much unknown coming into the next season. Like our expectation is based on what UTSA have done in the last three years. And that team is out of here. The core is not the same core that we have had for the last three, four years. That core is completely different. Um, so yeah, that two and three deep means that's, that, that's, and that's what I mean. I'm not trying, I'm not doing like a market and play for everybody to go to the game, uh, the spring game, although I think everybody should, but like that to me is what's going to be intriguing. That's why I'm like, you know what? I don't care what I'm doing. I'm going to have to find a way to get to, I'm going to have to find a way to clear the schedule and make sure I'm there for that. I'm paying David. David shows the most love on Twitter, man. Shout out to David. That's my guy. Um, <clears throat> David says, I think we'll know where we're heading with the next. I think we'll know where we are heading with the next transfer window. Yeah. we. Uh, yeah. It'll definitely tip off. It'll, it'll definitely uh, tip off what's going, you know, where we're headed 100%. I'm still, I, I'm still shocked that we haven't brought a QB in. Like, that's. I don't know. That's that's alarming to me. But at this point, I'm 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 all in on both of the guys we got. And you know, it's probably a 90% chance that one of those two guys will be the starter. Uh Mike says, I agree with you. Our team will go as far as the offensive line will take us. It doesn't matter who is named QB if they don't have protection. That's a, that's absolutely right. And that will always be the case. I tell people all the time, um, the, the skill position guys make the plays that everybody can see. They get all the shine and all the glory. But you go look at uh you go look at what really breaks plays open, and it's always protection, it's always good blocking, um, and things like that. The linemen 
are the ones who tell the story all of all of the time. I, I'm, I guarantee you. Listen, you can see a lot of if you watch if you start by watching the line on any given play, you'll see what what the result of the play is going to be. You'll see every time. Seth Garcia is in the house. Seth, I don't know if I've seen you comment before, but welcome to the show. If you are new here, smash a like on the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. Welcome. He says, quick question. Do you think we should have a pavilion or a bubble like Texas does? Um, uh, then he goes on to say, even Rice has a bubble. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with either as long as um, the team is happy, as long as trailer is happy. I'm not, I'm not against either to be completely honest. Um, the bubbles are cool concepts to pavilions and all right concepts. I, un- I honestly don't really understand the pavilion thing. Like, <laughs> but um, I, I mean, I guess it's a, uh, I don't know. I've seen the like drawings and the markups of what it's going to look like. And I think it looks fine. I don't, I don't think it's, um, what's, I guess I'll ask you the question back. If you're still watching, what is the problem with, is there a problem with the pavilion? I don't know. I don't have a problem with, I don't have a problem with the pavilion if that's the way we want to go. But, Listen, I'll tell you this. I just care about if that is what's going to keep Coach Trailer for a little bit longer. I'm all for the Pavilion. Rice and Texas, they can have fun in a bubble. So <laughs> that's um, that's what I'll say. But I think there was some sort of technical reason that they couldn't have something that was closed off, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but... Um, I could be wrong, but I think I think there was some sort of technical reason. Uh, Seth says, it makes no sense. They have a pavilion if the boys are going to still be. Oh, it makes no sense to have a pavilion. The boys are still going to be getting hit, hit by the cold. Yeah, I thought about that as well. Um, but I think there's ways that they can still uh, they can heat up the field, though. I think there. I think I I, th- I, I do think so. I do think so. Um, you definitely need a, you definitely need a bubble. I think daddy trill bed F. I want to, I want to say, never mind. I don't know. I feel like my man right here, daddy trill trolls me sometimes in the comments. Shout out to Jack daddy trill though, regardless if he trolls or not. I'm just glad you, I'm just glad you're showing up. Um, yeah, that, ends the questions um yeah i think i'll wrap up here appreciate you guys for joining the show um let me know if you guys like the 6 p.m i think this was a way better turnout than the last time we did the 6 p.m so i appreciate you guys for showing up um daddy trill said troll what okay maybe not maybe maybe not maybe not maybe not there's some guy who trolls me and i think y'all have a same i have a same uh or similar icon or something like that Sorry about that, bro. But anyway, um, yeah, make sure you guys smash like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and also um, join. Join join as a member. Um, like I said, if you want to help the channel, the best way you can help the channel is join as a member. Um, got a lot of stuff planned this 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 year. Remember, like I said before, Josiah Tower Effa will be in the house next year. Um, and then also, I said next year. What am I saying? Next week on the show, we will have him on here live. Then we're also shooting a show next week with David Glasgow, and that'll be in person. And I'll give you guys an update on when that will come out closer to the actual show date. Um, But there we go. Uh, But anyway, see you guys next week. Talk to you guys on Twitter. Peace.